Good morning, everyone. We're not going to have a church service today because, like, the pipes froze and all that stuff, but I've got a story to tell today. So, I'm um, here by myself. I'm over here. You can't see me, but anyway. I'm going to tell my little story, but first I wanted to um, just be thankful that I can be here Jesus' birthday, and I could be here and worship by myself and praise Him and try to spread a little bit of joy and maybe comfort or whatever, or you know, just tell the story that I got to um, tell my friends and stuff. So, um, Christmas music is the hardest music to play, but I'm gonna play, I'm gonna try to play. Go tell it on the mountain because it kind of goes with the story that um, I'm talking about, that I'm going to tell you about. So just have to bear with me. And I'm not going to sing it because it's just hard. It's a lot. But anyway, I'm going to play all the song. Yeah. I'm going to move over here. 
in the story. And like on the post says, the caption said, this is not your traditional Christmas story. This is not like everybody knows how the story of Mary and Joseph and the baby and the was found in the stable and in Bethlehem and when Jesus was born he was placed in the manger. The last man came from afar and you know how it all began, how Jesus' life began. But I want to talk about the story of Jesus and his disciples as he was a little older, you know, like in kind of in the today's time maybe if you kinda of wanna look at it that way, not really. But um you know, as an adult, like we can relate to us because we're adults and this is when Jesus was an adult. So I'm going to start in Mark chapter 4 and verse 35, and it continues on out to like chapter 6 or whatever, but, <coughs> you know, you see, the birth of Jesus is a great testament to what Mary had to endure for the birth of her Savior, for the birth of her child, and he, you know, he grew up to be the Savior, and it, it was hard for her, it was hard for her and Joseph to find a place to they did, they endured, and they got through it. So, the story begins with this. Jesus and the twelve disciples start out on a journey on one side of the sea. The per- first part of the voyage seems to have started out well. And I imagine this was exciting for them, because they were going, you know, to, like, witness, and they were on their voyage, and they were going to heal stuff, and people, and, and do things, you know? Well, then a storm came upon them. The wind was blowing, the waves were beating into the ship, and Jesus was in, the back, was in the back part of the ship asleep. The disciples were all in a panic. Afraid, they woke Jesus up and asked him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? They were scared. I, I think I would be scared too. <laughs> Jesus arose, rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Peace be still. I love that. Peace be still. Jesus asked the disciples, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? I get it. You know. I think my faith would be a little shaken too. But. So, Jesus rebuked the storm. Um, well, the wind still lay down so the, the sea could be quiet. The wind still could. So they continue on. And here we have all of them on a ship in a storm, scared. Jesus sleep. And so they woke, like, he, they woke him up, and he calmed the storm, he calmed it, everything, you know, they were, they were good, they were, they were continuing on their voyage. Okay, right? <laughs> so, they come to the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. As soon as they got there, a man named Legion, he was a man with an unclean spirit, he came from out of the tombs. He had been chained and fettered, fettered, like chained and shackled, but when Jesus saw, when he saw Jesus, he ran to him and began to worship him. Know that, like, the, I, what I read, what I understand from what I read was, um, like, they, nobody could, like, help him. They were scared of him. He, he had demons, that could steer and stuff, and, and they couldn't, like, call him down. So they, you know, put him in the pain and stuff or whatever. But um, Jesus cast the clean spirits out of him. And he took his unclean spirits into pigs, and the pigs jumped in the sea, and they drowned and everything, you know, but that was pretty cool, like, the man had, I don't know, if, I don't realize, I don't know how he got the unclean spirits and demons and stuff, that's a little bit deeper than I went, but, um, Jesus cast them out, and like, put them in the pigs, you know, for a little piggy but, you know, whatever, but, um, so he, that's one thing that they did, well, that's the second thing they did, he calmed the seas, and Totally the disciples have faith. Now he cast the clean spirits out of Legion. So that's the second thing. All right, continuing on the voyage, they encountered a man named Jarius. Jarius. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> Jarius fell at Jesus' feet and told him his little daughter was needing healing as she lay at her death. On his way to her, on Jesus' way to her, <laughs> many people were following him, which included a woman that had been suffering from an issue of blood for 12 years. She thought if she could just touch the hem of his garment, that she would be made whole. You know, how how much of a testament is that about her faith? Because if she just touched like a, a piece of his clothes, 
you know, just something that he was wearing that that could kill her because he was so holy. And Jesus felt that, and he felt the, the, the he felt the spirit coming from from his clothes to sue her. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty deep right there. So as soon as she touched his clothing, she felt in her body that she was made whole. Jesus told her that her faith made her whole and that she was healed. While this was happening, this whole like thing with her, Jairus' daughter had passed away. And so he came and he called him like, your daughter died or whatever. So Jesus was still on the way to her, like that was his mission, he was going. And when he got to her, he healed her. He brought her out from death and he brought, you know, he brought her back to life. And um, she got up and she was like, okay, they, they fed her. And, you know, she ate. So that's another. So we've got the first thing we was, we was on the ship and telling the disciples to have faith. And then they come to the tomb, the commanding legion. And then the third thing was Jarius' daughter and then the one with the issue of blood. And then, yes. So the, the story goes on to say that Jesus had, that they had traveled to Jesus' own country. And the disciples followed him. The Sabbath day came, and he taught in the synagogue. Some were astonished to hear the things Jesus had did. I think, you know, all of us would be astonished to hear the things that Jesus did. And it, it's pretty amazing what he did. Um, how he healed these people, and how he was there, and how he cast out the unclean spirits, and how he... Really, for me, the one with the issue of blood, like that, that really touched my heart. But um, there were still some people that didn't believe him. Even though other people had saw this with their own two eyes and told them, I just literally saw this, they still didn't believe him. I, mean, I think to, in today's time, we still have people that are like that too, you know, like. Believe what like, only believe half of what you see, and then nothing what you hear, and stuff like that. I think it's the same together. I don't know, whatever. But anyway, that, that's sad. So, um, so he went to the village teaching the gospel. He went to the synagogue and he was teaching, and then he left from there, and then he went to the villages. He went village to village, and he was teaching. And he told his disciples to take nothing with them. And get two by two and spread the gospel. And if they came upon somebody or a village or a household or anybody that didn't believe them or didn't like what they were saying or anything like that, then dust their feet off and, and don't try again. You know, that that's on them. You know, they've got a everybody's gotta work out their own salvation through fear and trembling for them themselves, but I think that's pretty deep, and it does your feet, like, it's sad. It's sad that people would turn Jesus away. It's sad that people would turn the disciples away, but you never want to get to that point where Jesus says, I'm going to dust my feet, and you don't have another chance. It's awful. So, Jesus did all these great things. He went, he called, he healed, he you know, I don't know how old he was here, but this was like after this was he, he, when he was adult. You know, he, he did this stuff. And it's easy to say to your kids or your family or whoever about the the generic Jesus was born in a manger on Christmas, but nobody ever really tells about how what Jesus did as he was an adult and, and teaching and, and his miracles and how he followed the Holy Spirit and pleaded and God directed people and I think it's he, he was very humble and he tried to share that with everybody but not everybody accepts that and that's, that's awful. I hate that. So my whole point of my gathering all this story together I hope it makes sense. It did to me. <laughs> Jesus did all these things, and we as Christians today are also disciples. And we too can spread the gospel by witnessing and reminding our friends and family that keep your faith, you know. Hold, hold on to your faith because 
Your baby's just going to get you through that storm. Your baby's going to be there when you need you, when you're crying, when you're upset, and you're lonely, and whatever you're going through, hold on to your faith, don't let it go. You know, um, that, that's the foundation that you should start at. And then also remind your friends and family that, you know, I don't know how unclean spirits work and all that stuff, but if you feel like you have an unclean spirit or anything, you know, they can be cast out too. And I think that maybe some people wrestle with their demons and unclean spirits and, you know, they can, I don't really, like I said, I don't really research that much or whatever, but anyway, just remind your friends, you get, you know, if you got a, well, I'm fine. He can get all that negativity out. He can, he can clean up all that hatred and all that. That's what I'm saying. Um, I had made some more notes, but apparently I didn't keep them. I was up till two o'clock trying to perfect my story, which then every story about Jesus is perfected. But mine's not good. I've got mine. All right, so. Yes, this is another one. So we can be on the verge of death that leads 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 straight toward hell. Like we can be like dying literally, and on our way to hell. But you can change that. We can change that. And we can just just look back at you know we can we can ask to turn our hearts and and believe that he died and rose again and confess and we won't go to hell. You know we're going to heaven with him. And still my, my major, most favorite part of the story is to have faith like the woman that had the issue of blood. And I know we can't, like, touch Jesus and him and his garment right now because we're, like, flesh and he's here or whatever. But, you know, maybe when we raise our hands, just think that we're touching the him and his garment and... Just a piece of clothing from him would make us whole, make us clean, make us hear everything that we've got going on and heal the whole world. And you know, that's amazing. Just, just like a piece of cloth. So, you know, like, like we know it falls and we pray for people and just a little bitty piece of cloth can help that woman from everything that she's going through. So I, I hope you like my Christian story, my not so traditional Christian story. You can read up on it, and again, that was Mark chapter 4, verse 35, and it goes through chapter 6, and you can take your own take on it, and I'll spend the rest of the day meditating on that. Um, and the crowd goes wild. Okay, there's no crowd. Anyway, <laughs> but it's my crowd because I'm not nervous. Anyway, so I do know that we got some... Some people in our church that are sick, and we didn't have church service because the, the water has, has been freezing up and everything, whatever. But I know the weather is hard on getting out and going and doing things. And we have a family, I don't think I've ever seen it, it's cold, but um, especially the elderly. So I have on my list today to go visiting. Hopefully, I'll get to make that trips, those trips, and um, just remember all the elderly, the sick, the shut in, the lost, and those that can't get out, and those that don't have anybody there with them for Christmas, and just remember, Jesus is the reason for the season. So I'm going to pray for you. Thank you just for today. Thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for, for letting us celebrate Christmas as your birth, and I want to say, tell your mom thank you too, because I know what she went through was, was a lot. And Psalm Mary, did you know? Like, you know, did you know? It, did you know what Jesus is going to grow up to be and be our Savior and all that stuff? So, pray more about Jesus. And Lord, I just want to bless you today. Thank you for all your blessings today and just praise your name. And, Keep us all safe and happy and healthy. And if anybody understood anything in my message today, Lord, I hope that 
reached them and touched their heart, and then they got something out of it, and they can continue on with their study on that. And then your mom and dad are staying at home, and John and Marcy is a good friend. And I just wish to hear everybody that's on our prayer request list has been on our bulletins that we don't have today. And then, um, we're just in the end of our, our country, the end of our nation, and lead us and guide us and direct us and keep us safe, happy, and healthy until we come again. Amen. All right, bye, Facebook. Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, I love everybody in our little church, and I'm glad I could be here today to just say hello, to put something out from our church, not ordained or anything like that, but I am a disciple because Jesus made all of his followers disciples. Y'all have a good day and Merry Christmas. I love y'all.